Shape Builder is used to quickly create standard monument shapes. If we click on it here or hit S on the keyboard, it will pull up the dialog. I'll just move it over here to the side so we can see it better. As long as you have Live Preview selected, it will actually draw the stone for you while you make your changes. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is actually choose the shape style. If you choose, uh, if you start messing with numbers first and then switch to a different style, it will actually erase your numbers and start over. So it's a good idea to go ahead and start with a, a style first that you want to do. Uh, let's just go ahead and start with rooftop here so we can see how the different options work. Over here on the right, you can either type it in in inches, so like 42 inches by 24 inches. Um, we can go ahead and change the base length as well. You can also add on a polished margin. Um, the top offset here will offset that, whichever direction that you offset it in. And you can either type it in or you can just use the tickers. So let's say we wanted to go negative 6 inches here on the offset. You can also change the drop. These two tick boxes here will lock both of those together. So as you go down on one or up on one, it will do the same thing on the opposite side. Same thing with the side taper if you have that checked. And then as you click through, it will do the same on both sides. So if we were to exaggerate this drop a little bit more, let's just say we went with 6 inches. You'll see how the shape begins to take shape here. Um, we could also add flower vases if we wanted to. Um, it's best not to type in the numbers here, but rather just use the, the ticks and just go up or down by inches. These other numbers go up and down by a quarter inch, or sorry, eighth inch increments, whereas the vases will just do one inch increments. So as you can see, there's a lot of different features here that you can do: drops, tapers, offsets, length, height, um, lots of different tools. Apply fills will apply the grayscales for you for using granite fills later. Um, you can save your settings, and that will save those as your default the next time you open it up. Um, however, it's only going to save the number settings. So if I were to redo this design again, um, it now switched it to a SERP top instead of a rooftop and applied those number settings to a SERP top, which is actually kind of cool looking, um, but it wasn't quite what we had in mind. So you'd have to go and re-choose your shape style. Um, and then re-add the vases and redo the base length. It, it didn't save that number. One thing to know is that Shape Builder currently is only meant to do one shape at a time. So if I were to run Shape Builder again after I've already done it, it would uh, replace the stone that I had with this new one. Um, so let's say for instance I change these settings and to all zeros here. So, as you can see, um, that replaced our original. So if you want to do more than one uh, shape on a design, it's best to just create a new document, run Shape Builder on that, and then you can copy and paste that document or that shape into your current document that you're working on. If you had a shape that you used quite a bit, you could just go up to File and say Save As, and then you could save the file um, as the size or shape that you uh, want to keep. Um, shape Builder is really only meant for standard shapes. If you wanted to do anything custom, you could do that, um, but you would actually use the drawing tools over here. If we wanted to use the shape that we just built on the design that we were working on before, 
we could just copy everything, select everything, hit Control C to copy, go back over to our design and hit Control V to paste, and then we could send it to the back, holding Shift and then page down, and you can see that it's now in the back. And then from there we can move these pieces um, to wherever we wanted to put them. Let's select the original and delete that. And go ahead and group this. Holding down Shift, I'm going to select the die. And I'll hit E on the keyboard, and that will center it top to bottom. And I'll hit C on the keyboard, and that will center it left to right just to make sure that it's all centered. We've got a bit more height now, obviously, than we had with the 14-inch flat marker. So we could take our panels, and I'm just holding down control while I'm dragging so that it drags in a straight line down. And I could do the same thing with the top. Hold control and drag up a little bit. And that gives you a bit more room. Um, to play around with. You could also move things around with your nudge. I usually change my nudge to a quarter of an inch that way. If I had something selected, I could click left on my keyboard once, twice, three times. So that would be going three quarters of an inch, one more, that would be four, um, four quarters or, or a whole inch. I could do the same thing with this side. Um, if you hold down shift, it will actually do a double nudge. So I'd only have to click it twice in order to do the same distance as I did over there on the on the left. Um, or you can hold down control and it would do a half of a nudge instead of a double nudge. This looks a little bit too high still so I'll just nudge that down a little bit until it looks a little bit nicer. So now we've got our original stone on a die and base instead of a flat marker.